teachers and boards of trustees were welcomed onto the Hui Turangi Oramurai in Hamilton for the start of a four-day study of the draft Maori Pastoral Care Plan. The course was aimed at an examination of Maori spirituality and the history of the people. Participants were led through the pastoral care plan and later developed strategies for implementing it into their programs. The Māori pastoral care plan document was introduced by Pa Henare. Pa Henare led the participants through a detailed examination of the text of the plan. He opens briefly by indicating the journey to the arrival of the plan. So for them it was a question of reaching Te Wā, a moment, and of being able to celebrate that moment, of being able to, of being motivated to live that moment, of exercising the skills that were available for them at that moment, and to utilize the moment, to capitalize on the moment. That was theirs. And for their journey, uh, yes, they had a journey. We, we, we converged our journeys at various stage as we were supported by the Kaumatu Kui and Fano. Yeah. But those, again, on their own journey within the church, knew where they had come from, knew where they were at, and knew where, what, where they were going and what they wanted. Hence, the Kaupapa i Puta, now that we've celebrated this great event, Kofifikite Pihopa Māori, which everybody clamoured for, in nama ke te ki te peke, moni, ke taei ki Roma, ne, hei maui te Kaupapa, to take the Kaupapa of the Māori Bishop to Rome. They got loans and put the house on the market and did all sorts to get the money to go. So they went, kafifi, and of course it was a great celebration in Hokianga, 1988. Previous to that was the, the coming of the Pope, 1986. And he said, and everybody waited with bated breath, I have a gift to bring to you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, our lady, there was a Madonna, the black <laughs> Madonna. But we wanted some, we thought we got to hear something, another message. But all he said was, I'm bringing you a picture. <laughs> we didn't want a picture. That was 86. <clears throat> and then, in 1988, we celebrated the 150th anniversary of the first Mass Te Totara in Hokianga, while I was still there. So I hosted that hui. And we had the greatest news of the lot, bishop elect. And up comes Tahuira, and he says, He's looking for me. <laughs> Where is this so-and-so? <laughs> and so there was a terrific celebration, 1988. And then he was ordained a, a couple of months later, I think, I think it was. Now, that's that journey. And so the next question was, all right, Maori. now what? Very easy for us to fight for things and then just leave it in the lurch. Ne? That's human nature, of course. Human nature. You fight for what is hard to get. Once you get it, I would take it the tori, get the pussy. Well, how do we cure it, eh? How do I cure it? Now, how do I take the tori, how do we cure it? <laughs> 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 
it'll just, just, just bite that rat and leave it there. Now, I'm not saying that people talk with is the toady or the cure. <laughs> but the thing is, we, we, we fought for the bishop, Piopo Maori. Now, the question was, now you've got him, now what? Yeah, now what? And that was what we confronted at this time. It, it, it would be bad. Which is, in a way, the situation. To get the bishop and leave him there and say, oh, well, hooray, I'll see you when I want you. Yeah? So the, uh, the pastoral plan arose out of that. And we recognized, as it says in one earlier part, the, the unity that we ne had never had before, the opportunity for unity that we had never had before. Ara kotahi upoko. One head motiwi Māori katorika kapite motu. Because before that, ko ngā mill hills and mahi anei ko. Ko ngā maris and mahi anei ko. Do your own thing. Ne? That's not too bad. That's not a bad thing. But there comes a time. Ke kotahi te upoko, ke kotahi te reo karanga. There comes a time when there has to be one head, one voice, only one shepherd. The too many shepherds, oh no, go kore te hippi. No, go omoki ko, go omoki ko. And so there was a uh, unique opportunity in our history of having the unity, uh, 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 a symbol of unity. If that, uh, uh, that is one point. The other point was, now that we've got the pihopa, what system are we putting in place as support? Yeah, because it would crash him. So, what we were going to put in as a support system? Nah. And that was where this was born. That's how the pastoral plan was born. And that's what referred to there. Yeah? And that's a bit of history there on page 12. 1983, the setting up of Te Runa Ngote Hahi. Established by the bishops to speak on behalf of the Māori and to give the Māori a role in evangelizing his own people. If that's so, let's go get him. Second paragraph, 1988, first Catholic Māori bishop. History. 1988 of that year, the hui with the kahui o tiariki, the Māori priests and religious, and we meet once a year, support of each other. Then, te mauranga o te, o te plan. Aye. And that's a bit of the history. The church, universally, where are we up to? Atangi ke yakwe ne? Page 13, the intentions of the Catholic Church, first paragraph for 2,000 years. 2,000 years, the Church has attempted to float or believe the truth in different situations, to preach and live the Gospel in ways that are culturally relevant for each way of nation and culture. All right, next one at the back, uh, Epa, Mark. Recent Church documents, especially those of Vatican II, Pope John Paul VI, Pope Paul VI, Pope John Paul II, show a renewed appreciation of God's gift found in cultures and the determination to respect on and build on these gifts in fulfilling the mission of evangelization. Hi, next one. Sorry. In 1990, in a statement commemorating the 150th anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, the New Zealand Catholic bishops recognized that through the treaty, this country was established as a bicultural state and understood the treaty as a covenant and a ta'onga tapu it gives you the reference there down below, 20.25, New Zealand Catholic Bishops Conference Statement, 1990, a commemoration year for Aotearoa, New Zealand. They said it. Next one. In 1990, Catholics also recall the role played by Bishop John Baptiste Pompalia in the debate prior to the signing of the treaty on February the 6th, 1840, when he obtained from Governor Hodgson a guarantee of religious freedom for Christian denominations and for Māori customs and practices. English? Um, the English? <laughs> 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 the governor says, the several factors 
faiths of England, England of the Wesleyans of Rome, and also the Maori custom shall be alike protected by him. Yeah, that was a reference made by um, by Moana yesterday. All right. Next one, please. In 1990, the commitment of the Catholic Church to bicultural relationships in society and in the church itself has been affirmed. In practice, those relationships are expressed in the sharing of power and resources in the church and the recognition of different spiritualities within the church. It is as Maori that you belong to the church, John Paul II. Maori spirituality is a valid basis for the spirituality of Catholic Maori. In addressing the question of bicultural relation, I would reverse that sentence and consider the sharing of power and resources as a consequence. And uh, the, the other point should be first, in my opinion, the, the recognition of the spirituality of the Māori within the church to be point number one, and the sharing of power and resources to be a consequence of it, not the other way around, which ar uh, arose last night in our discussion the other side. All right. Um, what does the church say about culture? 3.3.1, page 14. Next one. Uh, uh, the whole lot. Recent church documents acknowledge that all cultures must be respected. There must be complete respect for the identity of each people with its own historical and cultural characteristics. Both peoples and individuals must enjoy fundamental equality, which is the basis of the right of all to share in the process of full development. And where did you get that from? The Church and Culture, number nine. No, I'm, I'm testing you on your quote. Oh, right. <laughs> on social concerns. Uh, Okay, social concerns, Pope John Paul. All right, next one. All, peoples have, all people have a right to exist, preserve, and develop their own culture. The first right of minorities is to exist. Another right which must be safeguarded is the right of minorities to preserve and develop their own culture. It is not unheard of that minority groups are threatened with cultural extinction. Have you heard that before? <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Um, John Paul II. He must be a pretty good guy. <laughs> so no difficulty is there. No difficulty. All right, next one. Okay. Missionaries often brought European culture and customs along with Christianity. But this does not mean that any culture is more privileged in the eyes of the church. Nevertheless, the church has been sent to all ages and nations and therefore is not tied exclusively and dissolubly <coughs> to any race or nation, to any one particular way of life, or to any customary practices, ancient or modern. The church is faithful to its traditions and is at the same time conscious of its universal <coughs> mission. It can then enter into communion with different forms of culture thereby enriching both themself, itself and the cultures themselves. I would suggest that you, that you uh, outline that in brilliant red <coughs> and keep that foremost. And who says that? Church in the Modern World from the Vatican Council. Mm -hmm. Not bad people, are they? <laughs> Not bad for that? <laughs> Thereby, yes, 25 years ago. Thereby enriching both itself and the cultures themselves. This comes straight from the Second Vatican Council, Church in the Modern World. It can enter into communion with different forms of culture, thereby enriching both itself and the cultures themselves. That's what it says here. But the reality might be a bit different. Nee? It seems to be a one-way street where there's no possibility of a culture enriching the church. But there we are. Let's go back to the document. And that's exactly what it says. Thereby it enriching both itself and the cultures. 
which is right. I agree with them. <laughs> uh, next one, D, sister. There must be freedom for each culture to live the Christian faith in its own way. The church does not wish to impose rigid uniformity in matters which do not involve the faith or the good of the whole community. Rather does she respect and foster the qualities and talents of the various races and traditions. Now you're giving a picture of what the church is saying. <coughs> well, what are you saying? All right. That last, uh, where would you get that from, sister? On sacred liturgy from the Vatican Council. Mm, not a bad organization. <laughs> the, where are we at the back? In 1976, I have like a report in surveying the pastoral needs of the Māori in the Catholic Church, found that radical changes were needed because the parish system set up on European lines was incapable of ministering to the spiritual needs of Māori who have a right and a need to live the Catholic faith in a way that is culturally relevant. The Arbuckle report was largely ignored by the Church of Aotearoa. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't totally agree with the statement. <coughs> uh, that uh, the parish system set up on European lines was incapable of ministering to the spiritual needs of Māori. I don't think I would say that, because in fact, many of our Māori are inv involved in parish life. Mm -hmm. And who is going to minister to them? Pity he Māori? There are only ten of us. I don't know. Te kawano mātou. How the heck can we minister to them? So therefore, where do they go to? The parish. Hmm? So uh, it, that was in 1976, and <laughs> I know some parishes which are uh, really fabulous. They're really great, and they do great work. Uh, so it's, it's not, the most important thing is that the service be offered to our people. The second point is that it be culturally relevant. Those are the two important points. And I know parishes that are really doing a great job, so I would not go that far. Anyhow, that's what he's saying. Well, we're not saying that's the ideal. Not, we we may, may not be the ideal situation, the parish, but I still wish to acknowledge good work that's being done in the parishes. Because I can't do it. I couldn't do it, so therefore, I acknowledge others who do it. Auckland, 17,000 Catholic Maoris. Don't see them, mind you. <laughs> How could I serve as 17,000 Catholic Māori? Hmm? So therefore, we acknowledge the work done by people. All right. Take them to Western Springs. Take them to Western Springs? <laughs> one big mess. Yes, of course. Looking at ways of, of doing it, mm. to be, uh, to come alive, to mm. use Morioho. Mm. All right, this next one is very important, the church and non-Christian religion. It is very important with regard to this particular process that we're at at the moment. So can I have the next one, please? The church respects and esteems these non-Christian religions because they are the living expression of the soul of vast groups of people. They carry within them the echo of thousands of years of searching for God, a quest which is co incomplete, but often made with great sincerity and righteousness of heart. They possess an impressive patrimony of deeply religious texts. They have taught generations of people how to pray. They are all impregnated with innumerable seeds of the word and can constitute a true preparation for the gospel. A true preparation 
of the gospel. I would like to, to put the word dialogue after that. <clears throat> Never mind. <clears throat> Yes. Oh, there's, if there's any non-Christian religion, it's not specifying any particular one, but it would apply to all non-Christian religions. For example, uh, the Buddhists. And I, I had the privilege of going over the Dalai Lama, you know, and I saw Maori students of Buddhism. Uh, linked, linked in at various places around New Zealand, and I said to them, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm studying Buddhism. Do you know anything about Maori spirituality? No. Okay. But in listening, in, in listening to the, the spirituality of, of those people, for example, <clears throat> when he left in Eden, he called the community together in, in, in this uh, temple of theirs, and the Ikura to Maroko Su, in it, and he spoke directly to them and he said, I don't want to have any ill will from you towards the Chinese people. There are only a few Chinese who have has caused this to our country. I don't want any ill will from you towards the Chinese people. I want what he called positive emotions. Positive emotions. In 10 years, we will be back in Tibet. Now, the spirituality of peace, and in his talk in Dunedin, <coughs> talking about world peace, one young person put the question, how can I, a young person in, in New Zealand, contribute towards world peace? He said, by finding it within your own heart. Because if you haven't got it within your own heart, then you don't expect to affect the world to bring about peace. Now, those are, you know, those are two positive aspects of spirituality. One ke koe e fakaro kino ngako kino kite tanata. No ill will. What does the, what does the uh, penitential rites say? Uh, I confess to Almighty, come on, English, please. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts. In my thoughts. Ne? That's what he was addressing. So, no, he was not speaking of any non-Christian religion in particular, thank God, because if he didn't mention Maori, we wouldn't have squeezed in under that paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> because, e mea etahi, e kahore to ingwe iroto. Na reira wai huki waho. Some may say your name's not there, therefore, not valid. They want that. Tell us what the Second Vatican Council teaches. Church rejects nothing of what is true and holy in these non-Christian religions, yet she proclaims Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. In him, people find the fullness of their religious life. Let Christians acknowledge, preserve, and encourage the spiritual and moral truths found among non-Christians, also their social way, social life, and, and culture. Which document will you find it in? Second Vatican Council on the relation of the church to the Christian world. All right, so you're getting, the, you're, getting, you know, you're getting your sources mentioned in the pastoral plan, where you can go to, to say, well, you said it. You put them at the corner of Yakoto, and we're just following up on it. We've had our vision. As we moved along, you don't get to hear it. Ko e tahi ke ko, ke ko nei, e tahi ke ko nei, e tahi ke ko nei. But my, uh, so I've had the, we've had the vision, that Kamori Tuturu, we don't take the hahi. Either you don't get the kaupapa tuturu or te kawe, te mou i taua kaupapa. So that either the kaupapa is Māori or te kawe, 
uh, the, the means of, of portraying it is Māori, one or the other. Or as the English says, that we be truly Catholic and deeply Māori. That was the vision. And you teach it on the call, that's the vision. Now go do something about it. So you go and hire a car and you book it down to the school. <laughs> so what you do first, or book a ticket and see which is the cheaper, cheaper flight, whether it's Air New Zealand or probably the other one. I go to go to my Christchurch, you go All right, so you're taking the steps. So let's see what the mission statement uh, is saying about what we are to do. Arata ke ya koe? The mission statement defines what is intended by the plan. The plan promotes the development of Māori spirituality and culture, is essential for the development of Catholic life among the Māori people in a way that is deeply Māori and truly Catholic. All right. What we are saying is, if there is any hope of being able to build a solid basis for the Catholic faith, then that basis in the first place has to be Māori spirituality. To be able to have the, the richness and the depth, ne? That, that, that base has to be, the, the, the more solid the base, the deeper can the roots of Catholic faith take root within that soil. <coughs> Yeah, almost like the parable of the sower in scripture. No use to that could I could know you do with the divinity. Mera wake, I know for Marking a Tehuaraka, I know for Mate. So there has to be depth there. The greater the depth, the greater the chance. And builders know that unless that foundation is solid, only then can you get the six stories in. And if the base is not that solid, oh well, try for one story. All right, how are we going to express it? <clears throat> Māori people need to know, understand, and appreciate their own spirituality and culture. All right. In, so, in, in understanding that, in understanding that, uh, I, at this stage, I'm inviting you to come on board and to leave off other considerations that you may have. So instead of judging the fence post as you're sitting in the, in, in the train, oh yeah, one fence post now. Nah. Instead of looking that way, henna, titiropera. Just look this way and don't look that way by which you are dissipating energy, by which you are bringing in a uh, side, uh, Instead, just to keep that focus, because that's where you're going. You're not going that way. You're in the train. You're not going to jump the fence to get into that paddock. So why look there? You're heading for Hamilton. Therefore, let the vision be of Hamilton and take the steps to get there. Now, try to leave all those other things on the side. Try not to make judgments from there, 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 there. Instead of come on board first and look at that goal that we are uh, seeking to achieve and come on board. All right. Maori people need to know, understand, and appreciate their own spirituality and, cult and culture. From that point of view, you consider charter, uh, lessons, uh, everything else. And if you have a program on workshop, that's what you are to look at. Without judgment about uh, biculturalism, multiculturalism, and everything else, just go for the putake. The people need to know, understand, and appreciate their own spirituality and culture. Kanuitena. Don't bring in a whole lot of things that would complicate it. Instead, just go for that. Because of that statement, you give the Maori the solid base, only then can you have a chance. Only then can the church build on that. Ne? Now, this of course is aimed at ourselves, Tatati, we Māori ourselves. We must do it ourselves. That must be our priority. Reo, tikanga, anything, everything 
That's got to be our goal. Ne? Te reo, kura kaupapa, kohanga reo, every opportunity, young people, and I know you're involved in that. What I am saying is don't do it half-heartedly and with misgivings. Keep the mission in view and aim for that. Let that be the criterion, the goal. Don't worry about things on the side. You're not going sideways. It's only one thing that goes sideways and that's a crab. <laughs> we are going ahead. So keep that goal. So anything you can do, anything, anything you can do, kōrero ki wā kōtou tamariki, wā kōtou tamariki. How can we spout about things if we don't speak to our own children in te reo Māori? That's the priority. The need, so the need to know, the, the need for Māori people to know, understand and appreciate their own spirituality and culture. Now, Toby works in this field, Dean of Māori Studies, Rangatia Toby, Te Wana, Takiuro, Tamaki, Big Chief, Toby. Yeah. And he knows that, well, I'm telling him, that his goal is <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. And if he edit the Nikita Papaka, it's it's your kerna, you know, considering other cultures and what their reflections might be, I'm saying, Toby, look ahead, not sideways. Don't worry about those other cheats at your place. You have one job and you're going to have to measure up to that. The teachers in the schools, that's what we're going to measure up to. Me, this is what I've got to measure up to. Ne? To that point. Anything, anything, books. There's a fabulous display out in the library out here. Fabulous display. To know, and we're going to go for it. Tatana te tai te timu. Tide's going out. Ne? You know what's happening when you get stranded in Utah. You just stand there in the bog. And then it's worse still when it comes in. <laughs> so therefore, everything, a jenny, a tokuda, anything, 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 anyone, bribe anyone, get them into the school, bribe pa tahuida to come down there, use any sort of tricks. <laughs> uh, any sort of tricks, except of course the, the goal does not justify the means. So the means have got to be just as well as the goal, but that's quite just if you sort of why well, take out to you know? <laughs> <laughs> and if that is so of us, it is so of New Zealand society, and it is so of the church. People need to know, understand, and appreciate their own spirituality and culture. Point number two. There's a three-way dialogue between <coughs> the Maori culture and interrelates with the gospel message and with the teachings and practices of the Catholic Church. Okay, and you see on the right-hand side what is supposed to be in a triangle. Jenny, I didn't know you were so... Geyak with the mana. <laughs> you establish such a solid foundation in Tera Po, whereby you either enlighten them or you scandalize them. Such a solid foundation, Maman Rocket to build on that. And we just mentioned your name. And I just, I just, just said to Jenny, hey Jenny, anything you can do in your school to help them to know and understand and appreciate their culture and spirituality is worth it. Bribe Pa to come to your school. Huh? <laughs> uh, so there you are, you, you know. It, it, is, it, it is a reflection on the divine. When the divine, uh, when the divine has a thought, that thought becomes a reality. <laughs> You have a thought, 
and the reality becomes <laughs> present. What else have you got in mind? <laughs> Shall we beam a few more people up? <laughs> I tell you, that's where mana is. You see? And the money called or chair in the night, mana. It doesn't really get to the point. Doesn't get to the point. If then uh, the 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 effect of our mana. Uh, uh, no, sorry, the aspect here of Māori spirituality is an actual indication of our linking in with God. If our thoughts this morning and kōrero produced a person, then that is the image of Christ, who be the Word became a person. At first, I thought we could never reach that stage where a thought for us would become a person. But this morning, it's disproved it. But there again, is a, 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 there is an image. There is an image in that, a symbolism of Māori spirituality. And it, that is our link back in our reflection with gospel and church. Because that's going to be our link back into, God, into the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son. A thought, an, the, the, the word is the person. As I said in Māori, I te oro ko tīmatanga te kupu. I te atu te kupu, ko te atu ana te kupu. John 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. This morning, in our class, there was a thought. And the thought became a person who became present. <laughs> I'm just trying to share with you the mana that we have. And if we could be more direct, you see what we could do. You see what we could do. It is now Inu tea time. <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora. The remainder of Pa Henare's examination of the pastoral care plan is not available in this video series. You are earnestly encouraged to follow up this tape by reading and studying the mission statement. Implementation proposals and objectives in your own community and Fano. against others. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord God of justice, help us to acknowledge in ourselves as a people and as individuals 
our sins of thought, of word, of deed, and of omission. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. And we ask you now, Lord, for our redemption, to heal the harm we have done to each other and to our relationship with you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Each one of you has received a special grace. So, like good stewards, responsible for all these different graces of God, put yourselves at the service of others. <coughs> if you are a speaker, Speak in words which seem to come from God. If you are a helper, help as though every action was done at God's orders, so that in everything God may receive the glory through Jesus Christ, since to him alone belong all glory and power forever and ever. Amen. 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 And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And in response, we pray together the psalm. I thank, I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. All the earth shall thank you when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the Lord's praise. How great is the glory of the Lord. For the Lord is high, he endures from the glory, and the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of affliction, you give me life and exaggerate my foes. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands.
Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Listen. Imagine a sower going out to sow. Now it happened that as he sowed, some of the seed fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and bit it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, where it found little soil and sprang up straight away because there was no depth of earth. And when the sun came up, it was scorched, and not having any roots, it withered away. Some seed fell into thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no crop. And some seeds fell into rich soil, and growing tall and strong, produced crop, and yielded thirty, sixty, even a hundredfold. And he said, Listen, anyone who has ears to hear. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. As we mentioned yesterday, what we all seek after is mana, the ability to effect. The soul of the seed seeks mana so that when he plants and where he plants, as a result of his planting, the seed, so that the seed would germinate and grow and blossom and bloom, the scent of which can be perceived. And for a fruit tree that it bears fruit, that gives well-being to people. And for those, and for us, who must respond to the first reading, that we have been given special gifts, that we are stewards, and that therefore we must play our role, whatever that may be, we must find it to be able to play it. Each of us then, even within those roles, would seek after mana, so that when the speaker speaks, there are ears that will listen. So that one who wants to serve, there be somebody there to serve. And so we seek after manna. <clears throat> and in practical terms, manna means choosing. Manna means the ability to make choices. But there are conditions, though, or guidelines for the, the choice that we make. And so we find that Tika says to us, we can only make choices between one tikka and another, between one judgment that addresses the tapu of people and, and another way of addressing the tapu of people. We have no choice between tikka and he. We have no choice between what is right and what is wrong. No choice. We only have choice between what, is, have, what would have a greater claim to what is right and proper, and one that has a lesser claim. And there is not necessarily wrong, no, it definitely is not wrong, to make the choice for the lesser right. Mm. But as a result of our, of our mana, we, we must be making these choices at every moment of our lives. And <clears throat> We need to, because mana needs to radiate out. And it radiates out in the choices that we make. Now, you've got a lot of choices that you have made during these couple of days. Either you've expressed them, or you still have them within. 
But they are, you know very well, and we know very well, they are choices that we have to make. Mana means that we make the choice based on tikka, on what is right and proper, because it addresses the tapu of people, my own tapu, and the source of my tapu. That is the greatest guideline, that one. The second choice is when I have to choose to be faithful to what was right. And in this field, the, the church and we who make up the church need to make choices of integrity, need to challenge the church, sections of the church, departments of the church, we as church people, <coughs> need to challenge the integrity. Because what the church may, may proclaim as tikka, as right, it may not necessarily follow that principle. Hence, the second form of choice is to choose to have integrity, faithfulness, tika. And we need to be able to make those every moment of our lives, every day in our lives. And no one can say that he or she does not have a choice. No one. Because of all things that God gave or took, he never took away free choice, free will. He never took that from us. And so we do have it. But we need to be able to exercise that manner to choose. So that even the priest who chooses, chooses priesthood must have that quality of choice. And though part of the package may be celibacy, obedience, and for some, poverty, that go with it, there is still the need for the explicit act of choice, of choosing, because that is where mana is. The, the, the need to make that conscious choice, the exercise of mana to choose, to choose, based on those principles, though. <clears throat> and we need to do that all the time. And what is important is that we do it and not be stripped of it to choose to do, rather than to be forced to do. Anticipate situations and make the choice. Exercise the mana to choose. Even if, it is, even if the expression of mana is, at this stage, in this case, I concede. But only because I'll be back tomorrow. In other words, never let one be stripped of that manna to choose. Retain the manna to choose. Retain that manna, because that is the extension, that is the, uh, the outreach of one's very being. And as one will never surrender one's being, one's tapu, then one must never surrender one's manna either. <coughs> but always to choose, to choose. That's the exercise of manna. And if we, could and look at it from that point of view, then choose to give worship and love to the spiritual source of our very tapu. Choose to do it. Don't look down one, two, three, or it's number three. Instead, choose to do it. That is the, the effect of having mana, to choose to do it. And, it, and in the exercise of mana, of course, it redounds and builds our tapu. Remember, tapu is not just physical, the physical, it is the totality of one's being, spiritual, psychological, emotional, cultural. All those make, make up the tapu. The tapu is enhanced. The mana radiates out even more, being able to effect and bring things about. The first stage, of course, is the redressing or the restoring of mana <clears throat> and that uh, of tapu, and that consists of again reconciling with the very source. And so, Pita, Death, Niti, and Nahorua, who, as we began our acknowledgement of our source of tapu, 
you sought to, to have our taboo restored, reestablished, reconciled among ourselves first, and then back to the very source. And so with that, let us continue our celebration with Tapu Restored, and let's go through, let's enjoy the rest of the celebration in which our Tapu is addressed and enhanced in the words of scripture, in our very presence, and then in the gift of Jesus himself. Kia ora. <laughs>